Hi everybody, welcome back to Let's Level Up. My name is Rick, and thanks to 2D6.org, we have another Kickstarter preview for you. Uh, this is going to be Edgar Games Stack and Attack. Uh, essentially, we play a Neanderthal who's a bit down on his luck, and decides to appease the gods by creating a tower of stone, uh, by stacking rocks essentially on top of one another. Um, only problem with our plan is that everybody else at the table is doing the same thing. So, you can throw stones at your neighbors and cause their towers to fall down. Uh, this game is for two to four players. It is, it's, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, it's very simplistic. At its core, it's a deck building game that has a built-in attack mechanic. Um, so I can essentially take one of the stones from my hand and lob it at my uh, nearby opponent's tower, causing to potentially fall down. Uh, I can actually pick which stone in the tower I want to attack, and then there is a defense mecha mechanic built into that. So. Uh, essentially, if my score can beat their score, their tower above where I attack falls. Um, that's a thousand foot view of the game. Uh, again, this preview video, we're going to look at some of the components. We're going to take a look inside the box and teach you how to play it a little bit. Uh, from there, you can decide whether to uh, back their Kickstarter project, which is currently live um, as of September 15th. Uh, so, I, 2013. <laughs> um, I definitely recommend you check it out. These guys have a really fun game. Um, it doesn't take itself too seriously and markets to casual gamers and families. So um, I think this is definitely one to look at. Again, it plays in about 30 minutes and it's for two to four players. Uh, follow us after the jump and we are going to show you Stack and Attack. So this is Stack Attack at its core. Um, what we have here in front of you uh, is going to be, of course, the box. <laughs> um, we're going to have a quarry, which we'll talk about later, and we'll have our actual scoring tile. Um, now this represents our tower, and each of these towers is a, basically a number it's from 1 to 15, and that's how many arms you essentially have in our tower. Um, once we reach 15 at any point, that person is the winner. Now, the only problem is, is that every other player at the table is trying to accomplish the same goal as you. So they're going to be flinging rocks at your tower, and it's going to be up to you to be able to defend your tower from that attack. And essentially, uh, do the same to your opponent. Uh, if they're getting close to winning, you're going to want to knock their tower down. Uh, so this is kind of a tug-of-war race to 15 built inside of a deck-building game. It's a really neat concept, and I think really executed well by Egra here. Now let's talk about the two different types of stones that we're going to be using. Um, there are the blue tiled stones, which are going to be the flat rocks. Um, you'll also notice the flat rocks have a higher defense value than their opposite uh, round rocks. Um, so you have flat and round rocks. Now there are three different levels each types of these. Um, but first, again, the difference is Flat generally will have one point higher defense. Round will generally have one point higher offense. Um, so when we're creating our tower, we're going to want a higher defense at the lower areas, and then uh, and it'll go up again higher and higher. So we kind of keep the round ones for our offense, if if possible, and the flat ones for defense. Um, again, along with the small variants of each card, uh, you'll notice that the smalls will actually represent one arm worth there. You can see there's a line where the rock is. Um, there are also medium rocks. That'll look like that. And again, the round counterpart. Um, you'll notice that's basically twice as big as a small one. So it's going to take up two spots on the tower. Uh, and finally, there are big rocks. And these rocks are essentially three. So let's take a closer look at each one of these cards. Now in Stack and Attack, our basic cards again are going to be rocks. Let me give a quick focus here. There we go. Um, so the small rocks again are one size. They cost one. They have an attack of two. Oh sorry, this is the round rock. has an attack of two and a defense of one. Now if we look at the flat counterpart, you basically notice that the defense and the attack have been swapped. So it has an attack of one and a defense of two. Uh, the medium rocks, again, uh, basically going to upgrade by one since it's twice as big. So it has an attack of two, a defense of three for the flat rock, a cost of two. 
And the round rock will have, again, a cost of 2, attack of 3, and a defense of 2. The big rock, again, cost of 3 because it's 3 tall. This is the flat rock, so it has an attack of 3 and a defense of actually 5. So this is a very, very good card to have at the bottom of your tower. Lastly, the big round rock, cost of 3, attack of 5, and a defense of 3. This is going to be a great one to actually hurl at your enemy's towers um, to knock those things down. We'll get into attacking a little bit later in this video. Right now, I just wanted to go over the basics of these cards. So your hand is going to essentially be one of each big rock, one of each medium rock, and three of each small rock. You're going to take this hand up when you start the game and give it a good shuffle. And then you'll draw three cards. And then you're ready to basically start playing the game. So in my hand, I've got one small flat rock, one big flat rock, and one medium round rock. Um, so since I got this big flat rock here, I'm going to go ahead and set this up. And this is going to be the first card that we'd play on our tower. This is a great start because it has the five defenses. This is an awesome base for us. Um, now, what can we do on our turn? Uh, essentially, we have four action points to do on our turn. And with that action points, we can use to spend cards to actually put them on our tower. So this, essentially, this card costs three, leaving me with one action point. I can go to my quarry, which is the set of five cards in the middle there, and purchase cards. Or I can attack my enemies with my action points, again, by paying the cost of the card when attacking. Okay, so the five cards in the middle here represent the quarry. Now this is going to be a neutral bank where all players can actually use to buy more stones and build that deck. Um, so again, you have four different action points that you can use to buy these things. So again, we've got a big flat rock here, which would be great to have in our deck a medium flat rock, a boomer, uh, a boomer rock, and a great strength. You'll notice those are gray. Um, those are kind of a special bonus that you'll play that'll give you an enhancement uh, on your turn, whether it's an attack bonus, a defense bonus, or giving you more action points. Um, there are, I believe, five different types of cards, and there are going to be two of each of those within the quarry itself. If we decide to buy something for the cost of the card, we can actually put it into our discard pile, and replace it with the latest and greatest card from the top of the deck there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just reset this really fast. And I don't want to actually want to buy things on my first turn. I'm going to use my action points to actually start my tower out and see if I can just get a bunch of aggro from the table. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my big flat rock and I'm going to play it for three and put it right here on the base of my tower. So that's the strongest base of the tower that we can get. If I can get this big flat rock before somebody else, I can actually stack this on top of that. Which brings me to an interesting point. This scoring tower here is divided into three sections. There's the green section, which I can actually play big rocks on. Um, there's the orange section, where I can play medium and small rocks. And then finally, the top section, where I can only play small rocks. So essentially, as this tower gets higher and higher, I, am, uh, I have less options to play. So I, as of point 0.7 here on the tower is where my limit is for playing big rocks. Point 0.12, I can no longer play uh, medium rocks. I do get a pluses here at uh, 5. I get a draw plus 1, so I'll be drawing 4 cards instead of 3. At 9, I'll be getting another action point. And on 12, I'll be getting a hold plus 1. Um, so I'll be able to essentially get stronger as I going up, but also the game is balanced to the point where I'm being, I have less opportunity to do things. Uh, because once I get to point 12, I can only play small rocks. And small rocks have the, have the lowest defense value of all the cards. So on my turn, I have one small flat rock and one medium round rock to, round rock <laughs> to play. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use my other action point and go ahead and play this small flat rock right here, bringing me to a total height of 4 on my turn. At the end of my turn, I'm going to take my discard pile, shuffle it back into my hand, and then draw back up to 3 cards. Now, I don't necessarily have to draw up to 3. That is an option that Edgar is providing for us. Um, so. A couple things that are different from this than normal deck building games. One, I always lose my hand at the end of my turn and shuffle it back into my deck. 
Um, I take my entire discard pile, I put my hand into my discard pile, and then I take my entire discard and, and shuffle it back into my hand, or sorry, my deck, and then draw up to three. And they're giving you the option there. Um, this card, or your deck, is basically what you're going to use to attack and defend from. Um, so let's talk about that a second. Let's say, on my enemy's turn, they decide that they are going to throw a medium round rock at us. Oh, let me put that in frame so you guys can actually see it. So they're going to throw this medium round rock at us. So they're paying a cost of two. It has an attack of three and a defense of two. Now the attacker gets to designate which rock it is that they want to attack. So they're going to go ahead and try to take out our base and just cripple us from the outright. Um, we have a base defense of five and our small flat rocker is essentially any rock that's higher than the, the stone that they're going to attack, we add the defense onto it. So right now we're sitting with seven total defense and they have an attack of three. Now they declare they're going to use two cards from the top of their deck to add on to their offense. Um, and those two cards are another medium round rock and a medium flat rock. Now, before they flip those cards, I'm going to declare how many cards that I want to defend with. That's where this comes in here. If I'm out of cards in my deck, and they're all in my discard pile currently because I'm either being attacked too much or I'm doing too much attacking, um, or all my cards are just getting destroyed, um, I'm going to be limited on what I can defend with. So right now I'm at a 7. I don't really know that they're going to come at me with an 8. Um, so let's say I decide just to defend with one card. I declare one card, I toss it on there, it has a defense value of two. So we'd flip up, I'd have a nine, they'd essentially have an eight, I would beat them. In this game, attackers win on a tie. Um, so you can see there, the defense value for my big rock and my small flat rock is seven. I'm gonna add another small flat rock here for nine total. So since I won this encounter, this is going to go into my discard pile. Since they threw this rock, they're going to take the two cards they declared and they're going to put it back in their discard pile. And since they threw this rock at me, it's going to go into this discard pile. Now, if they were successful in that attack, whatever card that they were targeting would actually be destroyed along with the attacking stone. So you take both of these and essentially make a discard pile near the quarry somewhere. Um, every other stone above the stone that was destroyed is going to topple over back into my discard pile. And that's essentially how you do the combat. Okay, so that about does it with this uh, preview video. This was Stack at Attack. And again, uh, we are Neanderthal that is stacking stones um, to uh, essentially let the gods uh, show us a little favor. So if we can get our tower to 15 tall before anyone else can, we win the game. Um, only problem is that we're throwing stones at our friends and they're throwing them right back at us. Um, so we have to essentially play a tug of war or a race um, built inside of a deck building game. Um, there again, there are two different types of rocks. There's the small rocks, uh, or sorry, the uh, flat rocks and the round rocks, um, which are the orange and the blue, respectively. There are also additional enhancements that you can get, like Boomer Rock, which will return your attacking rock back to your hand, um, and Great Strength, which allows you to get more action points. Um, again, this is, this is a game that doesn't take itself too seriously, and it is a way for you just to uh, pull it out on the lunch table anytime you've got about a half hour to spare, play a game with up to four people, and uh, not have to have much preparation or really even much thought behind the whole thing. So it is. Uh, it does have a very, very uh, strong strategic background. And like all great casual games, um, it is very easy to learn. But there's also a, a degree of understanding that it's going to take to master this game, um, which are my favorite games. It's a game that I could literally pull on the box and play with anybody and still... Um, have a kind of sense of accomplishment when I'm finished with the game if I won or really sense of shame if that new guy beats me uh, which is generally what happens um, definitely the uh, the Will Wheaton-esque um, at, at least in terms of winning and losing when it comes to my gaming group I, I definitely lose more than I win um, 
again, if you like this video, please uh, take a look at uh, Igra's, or sorry, Agra's Kickstarter project. I'll have a link for it in this video, um, as well as follow our friends at 2d6.org on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, make sure you bookmark 2d6.org, and um, as well as follow me, Let's Level Up, um, and bookmark our site, letslevelup.net. Uh, we are available on Google+, Plus, on Facebook, on Twitter, and of course this YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe if you like the video. Drop us a like and a comment. I'd be eternally grateful to you guys. So, again, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed Stack and Attack, and I hope you really back the project because it seems like a lot of fun. And as always, let's game on.